there was no competition between the three of us. Th this is all fiction. I saw Al Levitin maybe four times during the year. I saw him once in January on a pelagic out of, uh, was it Monterey? I forget. I think Monterey yeah. or, uh, uh, or uh, the bay a little further north. I forget the name of it. Uh, I saw him once there, and he told me while we were on the boat, we were surprised. We had no idea we both were going to show up on this pelagic. Uh, he told me he had just come from British Columbia, where he had the Xantus hummingbird, and he said, would you like to, ha to have the schedules? I still got them with me. I said, if you would, that would be terrific. That's very, very nice of you. And he gave me the, the, uh, the schedules for when the ferries run uh, back and forth in order to, to get to the site of where the bird was. That was the first time I met Al, and everything was cordial, everything was nice. The next time I met him was uh, on Gamble. I'm sorry, uh, not Gamble. Uh, I did meet him on Gamble, but also just before that, he spent two weeks on Attu. And then I met him again on Gamble. And then I met him again on a pelagic with Greg Miller off of North Carolina. I also saw Greg the first two weeks of Attu on Attu. So I met Greg twice that I recall that year, and I met Al four times. There was no competition. And the reason there was no competition, you have to understand, I'm the only one that's ever done two big years. That gives me a terrific edge on a lot of things. I had spent, uh, you know, 11 years earlier learning the mistakes of doing a big year because most people really don't plan it out well. And they really don't know how to plan for it. It's a marathon. The, the amount of, of planning and logistics that goes into something like this has got to be just it's, crazy. It's subtle. It's subtle, but it's enormous. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, I'll just give you one example, and I think you'll get the picture easily. And this is not to put down the other guys. It really isn't. But in the book... Uh, Mark describes Sandy Camito the first day of the year. And he talks about how I had been checking the Internet, the uh, Christmas count reports, and all this stuff to find out where are the rarest birds now in North America. Because on January 1st, I want to be there to get the, the most uh, difficult ones, the rarest ones, get there first. See them get out of town, go to the next one. Turned out, January 1st of, nine, of 98, there were five pretty rare birds in southeast Arizona. There was no, no doubt in my mind I was going to go there. Now, one of them was Nutting Flycatcher. There were two previous North American records for it, a very tough flycatcher to identify. It, th there are subtle differences between that and uh, there's ash-throated and brown-crested, and they're all sort of similar, and they're found in the wintertime sometimes in southeast Arizona. So I had gone in mid-December of 97 when I first heard the report. I saw the Nuttings flycatcher. I now studied the bird the best I could to make sure if I saw it again, I would know it. And I hoped that some storm in the north would not blow the bird back to Mexico before the new year started. And so here, on, here am I in Arizona. Sure enough, I got like 20, 20-odd 20 people all beating the bushes, and we find the bird. And I photograph it. I'm a happy camper, but I don't spend much time there. I'm off to chase some other birds. I give you this long-winded story. Because Mark writes in the book, January 1st, Al Levitin. Al Levitin lives in a mansion in Snowmass, Colorado. But what he does, he spends that first day birding locally. Deep down inside, I scream, what the hell is wrong with you? 
You can't afford to lose that day. You should have your ass out there where the rarest birds are. We should have run into each other constantly. I knew just by the first day he had no chance. Greg did more or less the same. And right. many birders, I shouldn't say many, those who've tried big years, some of them haven't learned how important every day is. In my big year in 98, I spent 270 days away from home in the field. That's a solid nine months. Well, and you know, I don't, I don't know that it, it's so much that they don't understand how important every day is. I just, they don't. I don't know that they have the, the, maybe the tenacity and the fortitude that you do to actually do it. Well, now that's another thing. Remember, you're training for a marathon. Uh, every day that I'm in the field, I'm up before dawn. I'm in the field the entire day, although in the late afternoons, I may use that as time to drive from point A to point B to be ready for either if I'm going to do owling that night or the next place that I want to be at. So I'll be there bright and early in the morning when the birds are vocalizing and I can put maximum time in the field. Not a lot of guys can do that. It really takes endurance. It takes stamina. It takes pacing. And maybe most of all, it takes focus. A lot of guys don't have it. For example, I've talked to hundreds of people that, I, that I've said, here is my experience. I said, you want to chase a rare bird. You hear about a something or other. is in a real Grand Valley. You get to Texas. You rent your car. You don't stop for coffee. You don't stop to look at that bird on the wire. You say, oh, wait, there's a hawk up there. Keep going. After you got your bird, then you can enjoy your stopping and schmoozing yeah. and bullshitting with people and uh, high-fiving and saying, ah, we got the wonderful bird. I can't tell you how many times I've been at the site of a rare bird sighting, and it, I may be there with two people, 10 people, 20 people. We see the bird. We're watching it for five, 10 minutes. It disappears in the underbrush, and we don't see it anymore. Now a car or two pulls up. Is the bird still here? Well, it was here about five, 10 minutes ago. It just disappeared in the, in the shrubbery. The bird never shows up again. And invariably, I've heard one say, you know, if we hadn't stopped for whatever, we could have had it. And all it does is reinforce my belief you don't stop for anything. Yeah, it takes some discipline. Well, yeah, it does. And it, it, it takes endurance. Not a lot of people. Today I couldn't do an, another big year. I'm too damn old. And I couldn't, I couldn't handle uh, the regime of getting up. I, I still get up every, early every morning. But I couldn't take the entire long day, sometimes the big hikes. I don't think I could do the Kalima Warbler hike anymore. It's a killer. I don't think I could do a, a number of uh, different walks. 